Humans walking through walls is a phenomenon that has baffled scientists for centuries. Some believe it is a glitch in the fabric of reality, while others think it may be a form of advanced technology. Regardless of the cause, eyewitness accounts of people passing effortlessly through solid objects continue to surface around the world. The implications of this ability are both thrilling and terrifying, raising questions about the nature of existence and the limits of human potential. Ladies and gentlemen, ET Technology announces a Warp 5.0 device which can help you channelize your hyperspace energy and enable you to travel through walls. The research for this was done a millennia ago in the year 2006 by John Quincy St. Clair, who was considered a crackpot. His patents were considered as mere speculations of his overheated imagination. But today, we have proved that John Quincy was way ahead of his time. May this day be considered as one of the biggest milestones for human technology. May all our colleagues be remembered throughout the Omniverse. Imagine a world where you could travel through walls. You can travel through doors. In such a world, you can rob bank and no one can ever know that it was you. In such a world, the idea of personal space or privacy will just end. Me sitting in my room, enjoying the comfort of my privacy? It won't be the case. Anyone can enter my room at any point of the day or night and life will look very different. Even the concepts of money or barter system will just come to an end. Why use money when you can steal? The very idea or the very intrinsic value inside the barter system is the fact that there are two people who want to exchange goods in return of the other, but they have this in intrinsic restriction exerted upon themselves that they cannot steal it. But if you can steal it without anyone knowing it, then why would you want to follow the barter system? Even international travels will look completely different. You won't need an air ticket to travel. You can just tunnel through earth appear on the other side and travel wherever you want. But is this science fiction thing really possible? Were there some people in the future who were able to do so? Turns out there were two prominent people in the history of humanity who were famous for traveling through walls. Judy Lowell of Paris and Saint Martin de Porres of Peru. Saint Martin de Porres was a priest in the year 1500s. And he spent a lot of his times in prayers, meditations. His disciples once saw him walking through a wall. They were shocked. They were amazed. So begin the famous tales of Saint Martin de Porres. One disciple even said that he could heal the wounded. He can just pass his hand through the body of the wounded and heal the inside of the wound inside to the out. Imagine surgery in such a world. But is this scientifically true? Turns out that in the year 2006, the United States has a patent submitted by John Quincy St. Clair describing a method of traveling through walls. According to St. Clair, the human being is a hyperspace entity who are trapped inside a materialistic body in the three-dimensional world and given some appropriate energy, we can leave this 3D space and enter the hyperspace. Now, hyperspace is the theoretical space where we have more than three dimensions. Some physical theories point out that there are more than three dimensions, five, six, seven, and even 11 dimensions. But these dimensions are curled up in such a tiny space that we cannot see them. But still, they are theories. There is no practical way of proving them. So they exist only in the theoretical physics. According to St. Clair, the human body is comprised of 67% of water and any energy given to the human body gets directly transmitted to the water molecules. So if you give enough energy to the human body, these water molecules start vibrating and their vibration allows us to travel out of this 3D world into the hyperspace. One possible way with which St. Clair proposes to travel through walls is by walking at a certain speed. That speed is calculated by a certain software in which you feed the numerical values 
of the man of the person who wants to take the walk. Saint Clair discusses the vortices inside the human body. According to Saint Clair, there are seven vortices in the human body. These vortices are responsible for channeling the hyperspace energy into the human body. These seven vortices are in direct contrast with the seven chakras in the Hindu mythology. The vortex A or the head vortex is the vortex where all the energy from hyperspace enters the human body and this head vortex is responsible for directly communicating with the entities in the hyperspace. The vortex B or the spiritual eye vortex is also considered a modular vortex and it's connected directly to the head vortex. So the head vortex can project the spiritual eye to vast distances. Saint Clair says that this eye vortex has been tested to a distance of 100,000 light years. That's an enormous distance. It's it's nearly the diameter of the Milky Way. So according to Saint Clair, you can watch entities on the other side of the Milky Way just through your spiritual eye vortex. The vortex C or the voice vortex is the vortex which allows you to communicate to the entities in the hyperspace. The vortex D, the heart vortex, is supposed to provide protective energy to the upper internal organs. Now Saint Clair mentions protective energy. Now he does not mention why it's protective energy and why not destructive energy because energy is energy. It just depends upon the point of reference of, of the person who's looking at it. If it's protective or it's destructive. Vortex E provides protective energy to the lower internal organs. Vortex F is known as the plasma energy ball of the human body. It provides instructions for the other vortex as how to arrange them, how to connect them, and it has all the information to make a human. The hyperspace energy is considered electrical in nature. So any electrical energy needs a ground connection in order to complete the circuit. So vortex G provides a ground connection to the hyperspace energy. And lastly, the vortex H. It's the hand vortex. According to St. Clair, the right hand has an anti-clockwise vortex of energy and the left hand has a clockwise direction of energy vortex. When you bring your palms together like this way, the vortex rotates in the clockwise direction and it intensifies the energy flow around your palms. So what St. Clair says is you have to walk at a certain speed in this manner you have to keep your hands like this and this intensifies the vortices the head vortex the heart vortex they start collecting a lot of energy from hyperspace the speed at which the person has to walk will be calculated from the software and that software will produce will give you images of the strides length i'll tell you one thing i tried that i tried walking and i just hit myself in the face so the question is, is this really scientifically possible? What St. Clair is saying, is this really true? According to quantum tunneling, elementary particles can appear on the other side of a wall. It could be a potential barrier. It could be a barrier to their motion. And they have a non-zero probability of being on the other side of the wall or the barrier. So imagine you have a ping pong ball in your hand and there is a very tall building in front of you. You throw the ball towards the building. Through common sense, we know that the ball will rebound from the building and it will reach you. But quantum mechanics says that there is a non-zero probability of the ball appearing on the other side of the building. The smaller the mass of the object, the greater the probability of it appearing on the other side. So for electrons, neutrons and protons which have a billionth, billionth, billionth of mass of a ping pong ball, their probability is really considerable. In fact, our sun works on the basis of quantum tunneling. In the sun, at every second, there are billions and billions of protons, neutrons which are tunneling together to form the helium, the process called nuclear fusion. But for macroscopic objects, the quantum tunneling is really not appreciable. In fact, for a human body to appear on the other side, the number of atoms are staggering. 
there are billions and billions and billions of atoms in the human body and for them to appear on the other side of the wall it takes more than the lifetime of the universe and add to the fact that these atoms have to maintain their symmetry if some of those atoms broke their symmetry you won't be left you you would be different you will be changed so quantum tunneling forbids the tunneling of macroscopic objects and what about this hyperspace this concept that human beings are hyperspace entity hyperspace is still a theoretical thing we still cannot prove that and to say that human beings are hyperspace entities really stretches it so far it nearly coincides with the religious ideology in most religions that humans have a soul and the soul is independent from the body and the soul is trapped in the materialistic body maybe john quincy is a man from the future maybe he knows exactly how to do it maybe we are incapable of just doing it maybe his paper was way way ahead of our times only the future can tell but one thing is for sure that our physical theories are in direct contradiction with what the paper describes thank you for watching guys my name is avish and if you find this video helpful or if you learn something new from this video then please consider subscribing and hit that like button it's really gonna help this channel to grow